it's really hard to parallel park when you're dealing with parademons. Here's your look at the Jada Toys Justice League Batmobile and Batman. From the Justice League movie comes the Batmobile in 1 24th scale, along with the 2 and 3 quarter inch tall figure of the Dark Knight himself. The Batmobile features an opening cockpit, die cast metal body, and rubber tires. This Batmobile 1 24th scale die cast metal vehicle with figure comes packaged in a window box. Well, at least he didn't bring a pitchfork. Before we get a closer look at the Batmobile from Justice League, along with a tiny little Batman, let's grab the tape measure just to see how long this stands. Will I have to move this around a little bit? Okay, I think I will. I'm going to move Batman over just for a little bit. He is a metal figure after all. Has no, no posability to him whatsoever. Nor can he really sit inside the Batmobile. They're always really designed these miniatures to be displayed along with the Batmobile. Anyways though, grabbing back the tape measure from the end of, well, it's fins on the back here to the front of its rocket firing missile launchers. This one's armed up quite a lot. You're looking at the Justice League Batmobile being, I would say, about eight, eight and a half inches in length, give or take. And that works out to be a, vig a vehicle that's about 21 centimeters long. Sorry, Batman, I'm going to have to move you out of the way again. I'm going to take this Batmobile from the Justice League movie, just move it over just a little bit, and then bring in the Batmobile that came included or was released for the Batman v Superman movie. Obviously, the real reason why I wanted to bring in both Batmobiles for this case is just to show you that the bodies seem to be the same, <laughs> obviously several serious retools had to happen for this to go from this to looking like this. But the Batmobile, Batmobiles themselves seem to be the same width, seem also to be the same length to one another. Bringing back Batman again. Sorry, buddy, I keep moving you. The figure that you get with the Batmobile is actually just a little die-cast version of Batman primarily in his tactical suit. I don't think he's actually this silver in the movie. In fact, in the, actually the coloring of the gray that they've used here is actually more of a metallic silver. It's, I think it's way too bright, way too shiny, and way too much of an eyesore. The figure is all metal here except for really the cape. The cape's the only thing that's actually more of a softer plastic. Unfortunately, they had to find this place to be the place that they actually stamped any of the copyright information or any of the trademark information they'd have to stamp on the inside of the cape. You can kind of see it as you're looking through the legs of Batman. I kind of wish they could have put that somewhere else, or at least used a darker coloring than the white here. But the cape itself is a softer plastic. Batman does have no posability at all to speak of, and actually his head, squishy squishy, is also a softer plastic, just to get a closer look at his face. You know, it's not bad, other than just, again, I think the silver is way too shiny for what they ended up using here. It definitely doesn't look like that in the movie. He does technically come with and clue with a display stand. I've, we've looked at these often before when we looked at the Jada Toys vehicles. He comes with a circular stand. It's actually just more in the packaging just to keep the figure in place. If you do like your figures, though, with stands, Batman actually just attaches onto the display stand just like that. I'm balancing carefully not to make sure I fall, knock him over. The thing, unfortunately, about the display stand, though, is as you tip it upside down, you can kind of see how it's been screwed in to the actual corresponding part that goes onto the bottom of the cardboard. So essentially, like, this is on the bottom of the cardboard, or actually it goes this way, and then this would be the part that goes on top of the cardboard, or goes this way, in fact, and sandwiches together. I might just find myself actually sanding away the bottom of this, just so I could take this and clean off the bottom of it so it would be completely flat. If you wanted to use, say, Batman with the stand, sure, his feet attached to it fine and good, but when you put him on the base or on a shelf or anywhere you decide to put it, because it has those little pieces of plastic, those circular discs of plastic, it never really sits flat wobbles back and forth. Batman obviously, obviously, just because he doesn't have any possibility to speak of whatsoever, you can't sit him inside the Batmobile. I know, I already stated that before. So what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to move him out of the way. He's just going to stay there. He's going to stay there and watch the rest of this review. Picking up now the Batmobile. The Batmobile rose, rolls, first of all, very freely. No issues whatsoever. The front and the back of the tires are actually made of rubber. I like that they've made rubber. So far, in fact, all the vehicles that I've owned in my collection, rubber down the road always tends to split, but I find that the, the rubber that they've used here for the vehicles so far haven't had any problems whatsoever. They could have actually mixed the rubber, I think, with another material, maybe like a plastic or something along those lines to prevent the splitting of it. But so far, I haven't had any real issues with the tires spin, splitting or cracking. The Batmobile itself does have an opening cockpit 
though unlike the Batman v Superman one that would have actually had it open on both the sides, Batman has taken the time to swap out one seat. He sits, sits alone anyways when he's driving around in this thing. Why does he have to waste necessary space when he can easily just put a big giant gun there instead? I have to question, though, how close that may be to Batman. Is maybe the sound, first of all, going to deafen him? Not to mention all the excess heat that that's going to generate as it's blasting off parademons in front of him. Either way, though, he decides that he wants to sit next to it. You can have him seated inside. You can see there's a tiny little steering wheel. Detailing for what there is, occupying, of course, half the space now with a big giant gun, is nicely handled here. You've got a little bit of coloring added to the back of the seat in yellow, a little bit of red also added to the back there as well. But it's a really nice looking cockpit. Just to quickly put this one down and bring back in the one from Batman v Superman, this one again only just has, well, it doesn't have the gun, obviously. This one's also a little harder, I find, to open up. But as you can see, if I open this up successfully, just to show you the difference between the two, they seem to be sculpted almost identical to one another, short of the fact that now that some of the space is being occupied with a gun instead. They also seem to fold down the exact same way. The one thing about the window, though, as I fold these down both, this was actually split right symmetrically down the middle. When it comes to actually the one from Justice League, you'll notice that the window doesn't stop where the, the door stops. It actually continues over just a little bit more of that clear plastic. Not that that's really going to be protecting Batman at all. Uh, the thing about the Gatling gun, though, I'm just going to move this out of the way. It's not so much a Gatling gun, I suppose, as it's a big, giant, almost Cobra assault rifle from Robocop. But the thing about it, though, is while I did think that there may have been posability in it, I think what I'm ultimately doing is just twisting the plastic and eventually breaking it if I'm not too careful. There doesn't seem to be, the more time I'm spending looking at it, any posability with the big, giant cannon that he has. If you're doing any bit of twisting, I think what you're ultimately doing is twisting the peg that attaches this, and it's going to break right off. In fact, the Gatling guns, these are the Gatling guns here on the side. These don't rotate either. The, the only thing that actually does rotate when it comes to firepower, at least on this Batmobile, is the missiles on the front here. This does rotate forward and back, or side to side at least. Uh, one thing, of course, that was different between the two Batmobiles is that the original one had more of a Gatling gun turret here on the front that, again, like the missile launchers, did actually rotate back and forth. Other things that are different between the two vehicles, I mean, body-wise, the hull seems to be the same. I'm going to just hold them to the side so you guys can hopefully see them both. The sides seem to be the same. The headlights are also identical to one another. The only thing also I noticed with my own eyes is the fact that on the back here, the back of the Justice League Batmobile has all these additional yellow parts. I think these are like those flare missiles that he uses and fires behind him. At least that's my guess. You can see that they've been painted yellow. A nice breakup of color to an otherwise all dark gray Batmobile. Something also that I noticed on the back here involves me then to grab the other Batmobile once again and show you guys the difference between the two. It does look, in fact, like as you can see there on the back, the exhaust thruster is a lot smaller on the original Batman v Superman release. And you can see a lot more, a lot more vented here on the new Justice League release. Batmobiles, though, on the back, other than that, look to be exactly the same. Sorry, Batman, I'm moving again. I promised I wasn't going to. I should have not broken my promise. You can see, like, the back of the Batmobiles uh, are identical to one another. The one thing that, though, is different with the Justice League release, is that while this one was all black here for the Batman v Superman release, this one here now has a half and half, gray on the top, black on the bottom. The other thing that I also noticed with this Batmobile, too, comparing then the last two things I, I did want to mention, is that this one also does have a few little warning signs here done in, or stamped here in red. It's got that on both the sides. This Batmobile didn't have that. All in all, it's really, again, a nice looking Batmobile. This one has been a while around for a while. I, in fact, actually did find this one over on Entertainment Earth website. I always had this one, in fact, in my collection. I, in fact, had two of those Batmobiles in my collection. And I always still wanted to get myself the Justice League release. Let's just take Tactical Suit Batman, put him in the middle there. He has to feel like he's doing something. But the Justice League release is a little too, I would say, busy. I always really liked the sleek design look of the Batman v Superman. It had a lot of heavy firepower going for it, but it still had a sleekness to it. That some of it, unfortunately, gets lost when it comes to the Justice League release, that Batman had to strip away some of the sleekness in favor of firepower. And of course, obviously, if you're going to be dealing with the end of the world, the arrival of Darkseid, and a whole fleet of parademons, then yes, unfortunately, some sacrifices had to be made. He had to sacrifice the sleek design of the Batmobile in favor of firepower which obviously the new Justice League release Batmobile has a lot more of it. 
though I would still have to question how safe that really is to have a big giant cannon, this one right here, so close to the cockpit of Batman where he's, he's, where he's going to be sitting, it's still a nice looking Batmobile. And I'm actually leaning more to actually collecting now the 124th scale versus the 118th scale. 124th seems to be something that Jada Toys favors a lot more when it comes to the more unique design vehicles. I don't believe they've ever released the 118th version of this Batmobile. They certainly have not done here for the Justice League release either. The times are changing. If you had asked me back then, back in the day, what was my favorite Batmobile, I would have said right away it was the Michael Keaton Batmobile from the original 89 classic film and the follow-up film Batman Returns before eventually it lost its sides and became a bat pod instead. It was dethroned, though, eventually when Ben Affleck made his appearance with the Batmobile in Batman v Superman. I know I'm skipping over the Christian Bale Batmobile. And Tumblr was fine, but it never really considered it to be a true Batmobile. Batmobile needed to be sleek. It needed to be looking like a sports car slash tank. Tumblr was none of that. Well, it was a tank. It certainly wasn't a sports car sleek looking vehicle. Ben Affleck's Batmobile, on the other hand, that first made its appearance in Batman v Superman, and then did made a follow-up small cameo in the original Suicide Squad as he's chasing around the streets of Gotham City going after Mr. J and Harley Quinn. That was, of course, the last time we really saw the Batmobile looking like that. It then made an appearance again in Justice League, but too much of it, unfortunately, had to get changed. Batman saw the priority of having to augment and upgrade the existing Batmobile to add all these additional gun turrets, and not to mention a big giant... I can't still can't believe he's got a cannon so close to a cockpit like that. He has to sit there, and yet he's got a big giant gun. I can't believe it. Either way, though, he had to add a lot of extra armory in order to fight the parademons. I don't blame him, obviously. If you're going to be dealing with someone's from another dimension, dark side and the, the fleets of parademons, then, of course, the standard Batmobile probably didn't cut it. He had to add a lot more to it. It did make the Batmobile, admittingly, a little uglier. I kind of like the symmetry of looking at the, the symmetry of looking at the original design of Batmobile. And while still the body still remains here with the Justice League release, it doesn't have, to me, the sleek charm that I liked of the original one. Still, though, I did want to pick this one up because, of course, having the original Batman v Superman Batmobile, I did also want to have the Batmobile that it looks like in the Justice League film, even though we see for such a very short period of time. I end up again finding this one over on Entertainment Earth's website. Lately, I seem to be going over to Entertainment Earth because every once in a while, if they have sold out of their Batmobiles, I, ever go, I always go to the hot off the truck option. And sure enough... The last recent time that I went over to their website, hot off the truck was their Justice League release Batmobile. And not having picked it up in the past, I added it to my cart right away. Still, for me, when it comes to now collecting die-cast cars, I've kind of done away with collecting 118th scale. It's just too big. The bulky vehicles, you can have a whole lot less of them on the shelf. 124th, I feel like you're still getting just as much detail with a much smaller scale. They're also a lot more affordable, too. If you guys are interested and haven't had the yet chance to pick up any one of these Batmobiles, I'll provide the link certainly down below to where I found this over on Entertainment Earth's website. Down below, you can also let me know for a video question for today, what's your favorite movie Batmobile? I'm sure many of you are still settled on the 89 Keaton Batmobile, but how many of you actually like the Tumblr? How many of you like the Ben Affleck Batmobile? And many of you might even just say the 60s Adam West Batmobile. But what's your favorite? Let me know down below in the comments section. And as well, if you enjoyed this video, hit with a like. If you're loving the content you guys are seeing and certainly do want to stick around for more, then make sure if you haven't already done so that you hit the subscribe button down below and turn on the ever crucial bell notification. And while we have wrapped up right now for a souped up ride for Batman, for Batman with a very shiny looking armor, it looks like he's wearing tinfoil all over his body. While we have wrapped up this video, popping up at the very end will also be a playlist. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. That will be also showcasing all the other things I've looked at for Jada Toys in the past, and all the future Jada Toys reviews will also be sitting in that playlist as well. As always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.